Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Show Me Towers. Uh, we've got the man from uh, Australia back on the scene, Jimbo, New Zealand. Uh, Mystic Jimmy is back in the building. Um, we're going to actually look at the ins and outs of Wigan, the great Wigan Warriors. Uh, I'm quite excited about this, even though we've got one of the least amount of moves. I think we've got four out, Jim, two yeah, in. five out, two in. Five out, two in. so seven moves on the on the board. We've actually just got Salford above that. We've got Ryan Braley and maybe Ken Seo coming over to, 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 to talk about that now. But um, first of all, Jim, how holiday? Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's good to be back, but looking out that window and I've been in 30 degrees for three weeks, it's a bit miserable. You went to Brisbane. Well, give, give us a, give, give the give the give the viewers and the, and the listeners a view of what it's like being in Brisbane training ground. Yeah, well, I had a little visit down there, and it was a bit surreal because you just you just drive down there, nice and casual, jump out of the car, and you know you you're you're on the railing watching him train. Hardly no one there. You know, it was just like you'd think if that was we'd be there every day, wouldn't we? Watching yeah. him, you know, it's. Uh, but yeah, what a setup! Um, surreal, different world. You know the, the weather. You know they're, they're they're training in that weather all the time, and you know you think of the advantages, and we talk a lot, don't we, of us trying to catch up with the NRL, and and you, we we talk about the money and how big and how big a gap it is, and they can attract the best talent and keep the best talent. But in a lot of other sports, we've had it for years talking about tennis we're always up against it because we need indoors, you know, to be able to play all year round. Whereas Spain, America, the continent, they've got the advantage of more solid, good weather. So more people can play more of a time. And that's just one thing that it's home. It's like, not only have they got the money and the monetary advantages, they've also got the beauty of training and perfect pitches in lovely weather. It just makes it, that bit more appealing, doesn't it? And a bit more easy. We're going into the season now and last year, first six weeks of the season were mud baths, weren't they? Yeah. You don't see much rugby. I, you know, I was going Championship League One games every week and it's like, oh, who's going to handle the mud the best? Yeah. You know, they're straight into it. Perfect. Dry. It's just easier to play rugby and it. Skills can be Oh, there is a market for, there is a bit of a market for, I mean, so now I went to Boxing Day, at, not Boxing Day, New Year's, Day, I think it was Featherstone and Carson. I didn't mind it. I thought the mud enabled it. It definitely were a leveler, but I didn't mind some of the skill and the hits because the, you know, you haven't got that level of high percentage skill. You haven't got that glide on a dry pitch on a yeah. good day. But there's a little bit of fun sometimes. Yeah. You see that yeah. you know somebody come out and making a shot on and he landed in the mud <laughs> and it were like an area. So there's a little bit of uh, and the kicking game can be interesting. A bad kick can be a good kick. Yeah. Yeah, it adds a dimension. Adds dimension. I, I suppose what, you know, we don't mind a few games of it, don't we? I'm, I'm very much hoping that we don't have quite as wet a start to the season this year because it, it went on a bit long last year. It did. Um, right, Jimmy, uh, straight into it. I'll, I'll, I'll land over to you. We've got the outs and the ins. This is uh, Wigan Warriors. A little bit about Wigan. I, still, I, th I think one of the best signings they made last year was my Pete. I think the club's very well run. We've talked about it on the show this morning. One of the most embracing clubs. Me and Joe went absolutely amazing day. Everything's going right at Wigan at the moment. They got the Challenge Cup, Matty P. As Ryan said, Ryan Braley said this morning, they got the he got the thing off the back. Matty he got a, he got yeah. a trophy quick. Yeah, he took a bit of pressure off. Yeah, he's now. You know, this this is where you are as a Wigan fan. Before we go into it, is as a Wigan fan, you're probably at Leeds. You're probably at St Helens. You you've got to win it. That that's. There's no rebuilding stages at clubs like this. Mm -hmm. History tells you, you you're one of the only four clubs that have ever won it, and every year you're one of them four clubs who can win it. So Matt, he's not going to get a respite. No. He's literally straight in. If Wigan ever come out at top six, so the pressure, you know, young man who's done an amazing job. Sean O'Loughlin has gone into the coaching staff. He, he looked right at home. He's a legend of it. He's got a love of that Wigan. You know, I watched his staff and the way they all went about the business. They've got a great, a great, great feeling there. Culture is the word, isn't it? He, yeah. He adds to that, you know, keeping but, them around. But the one thing I've, I'm going to say again, it's a bit like Leeds, is that's all well and good and everything's fantastic, but it is a redu results industry and Wigan demand, you know, that top three, Jimmy. And you, I think 
Leeds Wigan say, if you do not win a Challenge Cup or a Grand Final every year, one of two, it's a disappointment. If you're not in the Grand Final or you're not in the Challenge Cup, yeah, that's not a disaster, but it's probably a very, very poor season by the standards that no Challenge Cup Final, no Grand Final, no thing is... That's the high... The bar is very high at Wigan. There's not an awful lot to play for. And as the Challenge Cup, arguably, as the years have gone by... I don't know, if we go back 15, 20 years, winning the grand final of a Challenge Cup, I don't think it was an awful lot, in it? said it yesterday, it's on but, the show. But now it feels, it feels like it. this. So so I'll take it further. If Wigan win the Challenge Cup again this year, but don't get to the grand final, and perhaps don't even win the grand final, it's not enough. They've, they've, Wigan, have, it's their best chance in a good few years, I think, of, of really trying to take Saints down. And why I'm handing it over to you, the ins and outs, Jim, is also a couple of the signings that they've managed to get existing done. Obviously, they've managed to keep. Yeah, but obviously Bevan and, and Fee. Yeah, and but Fee, Fee, and Fee Fee so two yeah, massive, retention. without this, to yeah. keep them two players in our competition. Again, thank for Wigan for keeping them in our competition. Mm. Thank you for, uh, you know, whoever. But we've managed, that, that's, I suppose Wigan might say, we have done business, we've, we've, we've renewed. Yeah. Two of the biggest stars in, in the in, in, in the Super League and probably two of the biggest stars in any sport anywhere around the world of rugby league are here. Yeah. And they're on our platform and, and, and again that, that they probably say that's the two big signings, but over to you, Jim. Yeah, I agree. I I I I think we can all agree that Bevan French will definitely have had opportunity to go back home and to keep him is amazing, isn't it? And and I think what this shows us, we got Cooper halfway through late last year but to only be bringing in two players wow. Toby King and Jake Wardle shows where Wigan feel they are they, they clearly don't think we were, we're miles off Saints we, we were miles off getting to the grand final they, they know that what they've got they're happy with it wouldn't surprise me that they potentially could have gone after more players but they were, they were happy so if this speaks volumes they've let a few go this is huge, Tommy Luluai. I think Tom Luluai, you know, retiring. How many games he played last year? Obviously, the numbers reduced over the last few years, but he's still, I imagine, was such an important part of their culture, such a good pro, pound for pound, the greatest tackler we've ever seen in this country. He's, a, I think, he's a big loss. You know, having that good, wise experience head around, um, maybe as much off the field as on the field. And Bateman's the other one, isn't he? So they, they, they have lost two key parts of the club and two important players on the pitch there. Um, there's no necessary direct replacement for either of them. You know, they've signed two centres, haven't they? So they've clearly not felt the need to replace them. They're happy with what they've got coming through with a lot of their you know, young players. We know they're, they're as good as any youth set up in the country. So it's a bit of trust in Matty Pete putting his trust in the young players who he knows very well that are coming through with the retentions and adding two of the what best centres in Super League. Uh, I think they've both got something to prove. We're biased, you know, we're to biased prove, with Toby, yeah. but they've both got to they both got to take it to the level. Toby flirted with being the best centre in the comp for eighteen months. And then he, he did he did massively when he got you know whatever. So I think Toby's got it all to prove. I think Jake Wardle exactly the same. Yeah. He looked like he was the best potentially the best centre in the mm. comp. He, he whatever happened on his field, he ended up at Warrington and he played okay. But he didn't break pots. He didn't he didn't no. he didn't have the impact I thought he would have. Uh, gone to Wigan. This is the good thing about Wigan. Toby and Jake, over to you. There ain't no excuses. Mm. You will be trained and coached to be the best you can be. The intensity level up there is without doubt as high as anywhere in the country. Mm. The facilities are absolutely astonishingly good and you've got good players around you. So yeah. there's nowhere to hide. No. These two don't become the best centres in the comp. I'd say that's where you are. Mm. Park your bar there. That's where you are. There'll be no excuses mm. this year. Big thing for me, we've got here, Oli Partington, Jake Bibby, Sam also. All three... Probably play 15, apart from Sam, certainly Jake. Uh, where have they gone, Jimmy? Where's Jake gone? Uh, Huddersfield? Yeah. 
Ollie's gone to Salford and Sam's yeah. gone to Leeds. Uh, uh, no, Huddersfield. They both they went both went as part of uh, Wardle, didn't they? So Jake and Sam Halsall. Yeah, have gone. We went to Huddersfield as part. We did that show on it, didn't we? As part of a Jake Wardle. What about there. the Wigan lad at Leeds? Uh, James McDonald. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why he wasn't on. This is off the official list, so I don't know why he wasn't on that. That's interesting because obviously James had been there. They pushed him to play this year at Leeds, so yeah. that'd be. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, I, but know, I, yeah. it's a weird one. Here's Wigan fans. So, oh, you like it? I, I look at Ollie, and he's so interesting because we're going to do the Salford one, and and, and uh, Ryan Braley this morning mentioned what what Ollie brings and how he how they were so true. But I said. It's probably down to cap. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, but Wigan didn't want to lose him, did they? Mm. It's a cap issue. Well, no, and, and as Ryan said, he would have got the value he deserved. Finally, they got to Salford and gone. Okay, I've been on 40, 50, 60,000. Yeah. To stay at what? To stay at Wigan, I have to stay within this. But now I think I'm at this level. I can yeah. get 120, 110 grand. Mm. Salford need that type of player. It's a perfect bit yeah, of business definitely. for everybody. And I think Wigan alone will say to Ollie, Ollie, go and earn some money. If that's what you can get. Yeah. But I tell you what, I I I, know, I thought he were a fifteen year Wigan player. Yeah, big surprise for me as well. Mm. I didn't think we'd let him go. His mentality, the way he played, he's pretty grubby. He's Ollie, yeah. he's in your face. He actually backed off a bit last year, and I wondered if they'd said, "Look, we need to clean you," you know, and and actually maybe affected his game. I'll say this to anybody who wants to be a pantomime villain. Ryan Bre- uh, Ryan Bailey, famously, yeah. you know. Ryan never backed off for being that person. If he were brought onto the pitch at Leeds in the bomb to upset the rhythm of the game and upset everybody, he did it mm. at the top level. Mm. And he didn't apologise throughout his career for doing it. I think we all he needs to decide if you're going to be that. James Bentley's done it this year at yeah. Leeds. He's, yeah, took, yeah. he's took on the role of that and it's maybe affecting towards the end where he's, don't know whether he's believed he's that player now and he's, and he's lost a bit of what he actually is because he's become... Ollie, I would say to somebody like you, Ollie, don't apologise. Jake Connor, you know, don't apologise. If that is where you, if that is the pantomime villains where you're going to be, that's em- it. Embrace Just take it. it. Some of the best players I've ever seen in, my, in Australia, some of the best players I've ever seen, they don't mind playing that. That's, mm. you know, what, what were his name? The lad who come over. Um, I always thought, not Maloney, the guy who were all in his A-day, Grub, they called him Grub or whatever. He's just left with Gailey, the halfback. Reynolds. Oh, Reynolds, right. Reynolds will get in your face anywhere you want. Yeah, wind up merchant. Wind up yeah. merchant. The Ucker who does the, um, there's an Ucker in NRL now who does the commentary. Uh, he was renowned 15 years getting in everyone's face mm. and being that person. Mm. So, Ollie, if you, I think you could be a loss. Wigan must have had, they will have a junior now who probably goes into Ollie's position on 30, 25, 30,000 who they think they can get 15, 20 games out of. So they've done that on the back of something else yeah, they've seen. confident in what's coming through, yeah. Uh, and they're always happy, Wigan, to do this way. Jake, actually, we watched Jake play. Me and Joe watched Jake play against Leeds last year. We yeah, thought I was there, yeah. You're there? Yeah. We thought we were outstanding. Yeah, if you remember, we he ran was, over. Yeah. Yeah. He took a carry from behind the post where we're like, oh my... We went over and I can remember us asking and, and he, you know, we'd already had an agent so we respectfully, as you should by the way, respectfully <laughs> step away from that yeah, situation. It's the end of it then. Not a lot of you abide by that rule. <laughs> and then this Sam Olsall, who were the same, who were very well rated. Yeah, the, the, he spent a bit of time at Newcastle, Denny, and the Newcastle fans were raving about him. I think Wigan fans who watched him play at, at Newcastle. There was, there was a lot of momentum from Wigan fans saying... Surely it's time to get Sam in. There was yep. like, you know, they, they were excited. So, I mean, we did the show on it. We, you know, I, I was shocked to see these two names leave the club. But we know how it works. It could have very easily been, well, look, they've got opportunity, serious opportunity to play elsewhere. Whereas here, if we're looking at five to ten games again, you know, we, we're going to be a bit less patient. I'll tell you where I'm surprised here. I'm going to throw something in here. John, John, let's talk about John. John's been... You know, it reportedly gone back to West Tigers for a big figure. Don't blame John, by the way. Brilliant John, young lad from Bradford to do what he's done. It's his second time then I really came back. Uh, I think it's a great bit of business if they got 120, whatever they got, they got good money for him. John, I don't think John was at the level he wanted before he went first time. No. Thought he was at a level there. And then when he hit Canberra that first year, best back rower in the world. We had the best back rower in the world in John Bateman in this country. I think John, for his own reasons, probably till afterwards, hasn't been up to that level. Uh, and even in the World Cup, I thought John's John is brilliant, but he's not at the level pre Canberra first year, last year Wigan. Yeah. 
And the 60-year-old kid I saw, probably the best 60-year-old kid, one of them I've ever saw in my life, John Bateman. Absolutely unplayable. I've seen John Square men up at 16 and 17 and not be bothered about anybody's yeah. reputation. Famously grabbed JP at 17. You know, when a young lad, he grabbed him as to say, I'm not bothered about you. And I don't think John... Everyone said, oh, God, losing John Bateman to do anything. And this is respectful for John. I think that if Wigan... They've lost Piers Paul. He's got another year. Yeah. We've got, we haven't got him on the list, but you've lost... I think losing Piers Paul at his stage of his career would be just as hard for Wigan because they brought him in from London mm. with a with with a with a raw with a raw reputation. Yeah. He then he then looks like he potentially is one of the best young players in the world. Yeah. And what about that good? He can play centre back row. He showed glimpses last year. He, he were only getting bigger, and stronger, faster, more yeah. skillful. I think finding out that they've only got him for another year, at his age, twenty one year old, is just as damn as losing the great John Bateman. I think it's way worse. Way worse, yeah, there you go. I totally agree with what you're saying. I think, uh, and, and I'm sure the romantics might be like, oh, to lose Bateman again, we thought he got him back to see his career out. Mm. I understand that, but yeah, I think to lose that, it's devastating for the league and it must be devastating for Wigan fans to lose Kai Pierce Ball because I don't think he's anywhere near his potential yet. No. Is he? I think he's still growing into that body and he's, he's going to become more athletic and, and, and I'm sure... And we've said to him, I tell you what worries me here, and I'm, 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 and, and again, me and Ryan have been talking, please don't clickbait. If you're going to put a comment, journalist, about what we say, please don't clickbait. Please put the rest. Don't just put, leading agent says, John Bateman this, or Jake Bibby this, or this. Please put the rest context. of what we're saying. You, need you must do it because it's causing absolute murders. Ryan said it's happening with the players. It's causing terrible problems in the game, but you're not putting the rest. Don't clickbait. And that, you know, let's do it properly. So I think that Wigan, I don't think, 6 seven, nine, one, Sam Powell, I love Sam. Mm -hmm. Ryan's talked about him this morning, competitor, and a rack of the game. Ryan's told us a little bit of stuff about him, how he's besotted with getting better all the time. Right. So he's got that application, right. he wants to be in that place, and he takes notes of everybody meets. So we've got this player, right, uh, Sam. But historically, is Sam a top three hooker in the comp? Probably is. He probably needs to. He's probably got another step on the ladder to go yeah. before we put him in that top chain. Yeah, he's, in, he's very much in a chasing. Yeah, you just, you'd have said Akers might have gone level with him and, and above. Yeah, I think he has gone above. Yeah, yeah above. Yeah. Then you're looking at Maka, Maka, Jeslett, and who's on the who's coming up that ladder, ain't you? So Sam's got probably a big year for Sam. Is if he wants to get in that next World Cup squad, it's probably his time now to put the markers down. Yeah, uh, to be that player. Yeah, but I I just challenge. We all love Harry Smith. We think he's a great young talent. Yeah, potentially when we watched him in the Aussie Test match, well, one of the best talents there. If you had, if you watched that second test, it would have been Wellsby. What? What? Yeah, what, he, he ran. He ran the game. Didn't he? he ran the game, didn't he? Yeah, uh, kicking, I his kicking game was. I'm saying to Callum McLean, I thought Callum were quiet because Harry seemed to dominate mm -hmm. the ball. Um, but Harry and is it Coot? Uh, uh, Cade. Sorry, Cade Cust. Cade Cust. You'd have thought Wigan are going in for something else. I'm, I'm, unless I'm missing something here and, and we're going to pull out the tricks. I'd have thought a Wigan looking to bring in cover, cover at nine, at, would you say cover at nine, six, seven? You'd, yeah. Yeah, you'd think so. You, you'd think that about 14 sort of player, wouldn't you? Either that or they just are happy using Jai Field there if they need to. As a running... And, and getting Bevan then at, you know, they, they, they can mix around, can't they, with the, the winger fullback. I, who's I've, the young lad actually probably the young lad who plays Hooker who actually were fantastic last year Um big friend of Lewis Dodds Brad, Brad yeah. yeah Brad Brad Brad. sorry Brad we've got the Hooker so you've got Brad there you've got uh, I won't say either a Brad or Sam Powell can play half so you're right they're going to have to bring Jay in and maybe switch that one I don't like that I, I think, think, yeah, I think they've got nine, nine covered it's that it's if, it's if you know Cade Cust if he gets injured you know we, what do we do then? Because if you start moving Jai out of fullback, then there's a young lad. He's about seventeen. Uh, we watched him last year, uh, and, and and he's outstanding. They're, they're dead, fullback. Lad. No, the half. I think he's an half. Is he a full? He, he looked the, oh, he looked right. the part. Yeah. And he he be somebody, but he looks like he's another year and a half off. Yeah. So I think here's one for you. And again, let's not clickbait it. I think they probably 
looking to me is they're going to have to be a little bit of movement there because can Wigan afford if they're going to win some or a double or can they afford to win with just two half backs? Well, that's uh, uh, this is a great way to think of it, isn't it? Last year, Saints lost Dodsey in the first third of the season. Then all bets were off. They were not going to cruise that league, mm. but they still managed, managed it. to do it. They still came top and they still won the final. If Wigan lose either of their two, you feel they're not quite in as strong a position, don't you? But the, I'm sure Wigan fans about to say, you're joking, we can put Jay in there, we can move Bevan to fullback, we can get... I, I get it, I get it, but I, I, I just think, I think modern day top teams, and then you're right, having Wells be there would have put a stroke of luck and genius that he could go in at seven for Lewis yeah, and, and the, play uh, that role. And by the way... And they use Roby there as well a lot. In our yeah, league. their systems are probably... I don't think they rely on an out-and-out half. I think what they did when Mr. Lewis is kicking and his end of sets mm. and his little bit of that, but I think that, let's be honest, they're probably that far ahead of game. They could do it arrogantly so. They could probably do it without. But I look at Wigan and I don't think their halves are as strong as Lomax and Dodds. And that's the, key. That, that's the thing. You, you, you'd be happy putting a number of people in alongside Lomax mm. to do a, a more exactly. than sufficient job. Yeah. And behind Roby at Hooker yeah. and, and Wellsby at fullback, you know, and that, and that system... But it'd be interesting because, and I've not had a chance to ask uh, Wigan or Matty this, there's suddenly some money's come up, that releases money, yeah. big money. Yeah. So there's a little pot now, a mile beach, this is what all coaches do when they get it, they be like, hey, I tell you what, there's a bit of movement bit to your son. So Matty will be wanting to meet people in the next few weeks and say, look, we've got some money now, John's gone, that's released the cap, let's go. And I, I, I'm looking at an half, yeah. and I'm probably looking at, Looking at where they are, and 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 I, I think looking for a proper back rower type. I think that I think maybe I think the props last year. I watched Wigan's uh, led led by Arman Singo mm. and led by uh, no. Young Smith is and, and Margo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, they, they, there were five or six of them looking. It won't surprise me if they bring one in. Mm. If they bring one in there, Wigan historically don't make that many moves in the market because they just look left. They don't have to. They just look at the academy. They've got five or six who are better than, you know, that. that's it. But they didn't win the they didn't win the grand final this year. It's the first year in nine years they haven't won the grand final. They didn't get in the final of the grand, uh, of the under-18s academy. They didn't get in the final. I watched Wigan twice. They were good, but you didn't pick out four or five outstanding. Do you know before, yeah. you, you didn't watch it. When I saw them do cast that day, you were looking at five or six, Ollie, Smithies, yeah. Harry, um, and Joe Brown played that day. But you're looking around, you were like this, you're like, definite, 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 definite. Maybe one of these played, but you were pointing at so many that you knew were going to be there. I watched them five, six years before that. I was looking if to actually see Tonkins and them to come through. Right. And, and so I didn't see that as obvious. Do you get me? Yeah, I suppose in the same breath, I, I think they did win the reserves. They won the reserve, but that again, respectfully, so the reserve comp was nowhere near no. the standard it should have been. De de definitely not. It I, was whoever's got a squad. Yeah, as as we said at the start of the year, but you know, you could say they've, they've got. They've de I'm sure Matty is confident with what's going through, but like you say, we, it's a similar story to Leeds, isn't it? We're worried if Leeds lose one of their halves. Yes, they can rejig with Myler, but it totally changes everything, and it. And we're we're looking at a few teams who are who are tipped to be Wigan are second favourites, you know, and we're not that far off Saints now. It's getting into a more that, of a yeah, top two, but but it, I just feel there's so many teams with not a lot of depth for half, except for you know maybe a team like OKR have got a little bit more options. And you know? when I put OKR up there, if you said to me what's the main reason you've said OKR, so well. Jordan Abdul, yeah. Rowan Mills, and Mikey Lewis. Lewis. If they, if they three lose, top quality. If they lose one half, it's not even a thing. They're all the same type, but you bang, just rotate, just rotate. Yeah. If one, if one doesn't hit some form, bang, mm. and that's without having to shift. Somebody said, "Oh yeah, you could play Coots there. You could play Minicello yeah, but you there." Change so much, you, don't you? Ches Litton went there last year, yeah. but you are miss when you're changing. You're missing what's being took out. Mm. I think the reason I've said where well, you're right is all Kiaris. I think they've got that little thing where they can just inject that any time they want. Yeah. I don't think Leeds and Wigan have. No. I think I think it always comes down to injuries, doesn't it? But yeah, you worry you worry about the depth and ass at a lot of teams. I I, I also think with Prague, I said it wouldn't surprise me if they bring a forward in. 
um, in some type of... Do, do you know what we're Wigan? And, and this is to say, I'm sure Wigan fans will agree here. Historically, you know, you look, and Leeds had a, had a 2017 hangover. Still probably have, if yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah. And should people say, should they have won it in 17? They want the best team in 17. They just played best on the night. Danny Maguire, you know, what yeah, we said. But, but historically from, like, thing there wasn't. There's no doubt anybody watched that season. Cast for the best side. Yeah, well, Saints were best. second best side. If you looked at it, it were all it were all done and Leeds unbelievably got there. But there's been a hangover. Wigan, historically, if you look at Wigan, the great Wigan sides, this will happen to Saints next year. Saints have got Roby leaving. This is the day. This is the... It, it, he's, come, he's done the James Brown and come back through every year when they said he's gone and he's come danced on again. Old Auckland was the best forward of the modern day history. The second best player to me, only better than him at loose forward, well, probably Scully, Sean O'Loughlin, Andy Farrell were the three best loose forwards I've ever seen. Not even by a bit, Jimmy. Yeah. All three would be in my dream team. Yeah. Sean O'Loughlin makes my dream team. Paul Schoolthorpe makes yeah. my dream team. Andy Farrell, right? Yeah. But you lost a, a time when they lost him, and I can remember thinking, wow, you just mentioned there, probably he'll go in there all of fame half backs, Thomas. Yeah. I've never heard Matty Pete talk about a player with pride when he talks about Thomas Lulua. He looked at me and went, you are. And he just drilled me on Tommy. Hmm. Now, I'm th- Tommy's gone on to coaching staff, so they managed to maintain Tommy and he's still yeah. there. Yeah. But there, in the space of three years, you've lost two of the best ever players to play in that position at Wigan. Hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. Along with Sam Tompkins, who historically, by the way, he has been replaced. This lad, Jai Fields, has replaced Sam. But... Also a stalwart and a historian, Sam and McKenny. Would Sam uh, would Sam McKenny dream team at Wigan? Probably. I think Sam as a fullback in Super League at his peak is the standout. Standout. Standout name. So so there's there's three. We've got three now who stand up in. We probably don't give enough credit for Wigan having to replace that. And Saints have got that coming, haven't they? Saints have got that coming. Long Max is what thirty two. Yeah. Ro- uh, Roby's out. They've lost. Who was the other one? Who was there? Was another one who was who's been a legend there? Well, he's not. He ain't lost him. But Percy's picking up injuries. Mm-hmm. Who's been an eight-year stalwart to that club? It is that just natural? And it'll take we're going a bit of time to go. You know what? We need to build our own. Morgan Smith is now going to be the new yeah. Sean O'Loughlin. Yeah. Harry Smith will he be the next Thomas Lulawai? Are you asking me that literally? <laughs> yes. Not for me, uh, but because I think Tommy Lula is so special. Yeah, I, I still think Harry Smith will be a Super League halfback yeah. for many years to come, and I rate him highly. But that is the, the, impossible. He's a once in a, a lifetime. So I'm saying player. this is you think John. Yeah. You know, historically John played 160 games for Wigan. John's gone. You know, he's an England international. He has never played for Wigan and not played for England. That's how much he's rated. Mm. He's always been in the England side when he's been at Wigan. So they've lost an England international. John Bateman for six years at Wigan. Who's the first name on England sheet? I'll tell you now, yeah. John Bateman. Yeah. So I, I think we probably need to give Wigan a bit of toffee and say, I'm saying Matty needs to win sweat this year, but I'm looking and thinking, you've lost three or four key players in the last three or four years who will go down as the, some of the greatest at the club. And we're probably putting a lot on Matty saying, yeah, go on then, recreate that. Mm. Leeds are six year into theirs. They still can't recreate it. Leeds is Leeds is six year from 17. Correct? Yeah. yeah. And they still have not got... You couldn't put your finger on Leeds this year and say they're going to win it. No chance, no. No, no they're, they're, no, no chance. Uh, and, and you think about Matty Nicholson going, you know, and you think about letting a couple of these lads go. Wigan know this is happening. Maybe Bateman's gone a year before the thought, but... Well, Piers Paul's massive, isn't it? Like, yeah. In fact, that's a great point where you said Matty Nicholson to Warrington and then losing Piers Paul, two of the best young back rowers in the country. Are we asking too much of Matty? Well, I, well, I'm thinking of it a different way. I'm thinking that Matty, part of Matty's... Re- the reasons bringing Matty into the role is that he knows what's coming through and he's clearly, I'm, some of this is out of their control, but I'm sure he's extremely confident in what he's got coming through to be good enough to make it a two-horse race. I'm wow. struggling to see anything but a two-horse race at the top of that table week in, week out. 
when it gets to playoffs, anything can happen. These are big losses, but I'm confident that they will. I, I think it will be Wigan and Saints up there. You know, to, well, listen, to, Toby and Jake, if he gets them on it, I'm going to answer your first question to me. Yes, you've got the two best centres in the comp yeah. for me. Oh, right up there, right up well, there. Well, Toby's no excuse. He's 26, 27. He has to be, if he's going to be that player. Jake Wardle, if there's not a club in Super League, don't take Jake Wardle as a one or two draft. Wigan, Warrington tried everything yeah. to get him off his field. Huddersfield devastated losing him. Yeah. So then he's gone to the other biggest club in the country, which yeah. is Wigan. Mm. I think if you said to Saints, do you fancy Jake Wardle? Then he said, yeah. So there's not any at top four. Maybe Leeds, because of what Leeds have got coming, would be brave enough to say to Jake, well, we've got Max, we've got um, Levi. Yeah, yeah. Would, do we, we, do, no, no, we're all right. Yeah. You know, we're all right. We've got, we've got our, we've got Harry Newman. We've got our, do you know what I mean? We've got our cover in that position. Maybe yeah. Leeds would be only ones, but so listen, two great signings at centre. And, and just sorry to interrupt, but do you, if we put a question mark there, are they going to reach, is Toby going to bounce back? You know, after Warrington have had a torrid time, you can you, you can well, understand. Well, even at field, I, I didn't think they saw the best of it. No, and I, and I agree, but I'm just saying, I can understand why his form has dropped. There's, the, the reasons why are evident. Do Have I got a question mark about Toby King having a brilliant year at Wigan? No, not no. not a tiny bit. Not not even a tiny bit. I think he'll be awesome. Mm. He just need, For me, he just needed a bit of fitness... Agility, speed, back, and we, we know how we can play. Yeah, yeah. Play an understanding of what he's doing. Jake Wardle, we don't know as well. So, all right, a tiny question mark. So, I think they're going to be so big for him. If they, if they don't, if they don't suffer with injuries, and I know we can say this for everyone, I find it very hard to to think that they're not in the top two. And, the, and I think I've got no only, worries. Only team that can apart can from be, the halves. That's all I've got on you. Yeah. That's all I've got on us. Yeah. And then it's a debate and it's a thing. I've only got one worry is the cover at half and are them two good enough yeah. to take you to a grand final and win it? That's that's my only thing. And I would say, generally, I would be having the same things. But when I look across the league, there's not lots of others that are mm. making me think, oh, no, you're way off. I think, I think there is as good as most. Special mention before we finish, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a lad at Wigan and, and you know, if you wanted that player, are we all are we all want in the game. And Liam Marshall, you know, he's, yeah. he, he, people are saying, oh, Bevan's side, yeah, well, Bevan is winning. Will he score more tries than Liam Marshall? Probably not. He's still back on Liam Marshall's keep scoring 25 tries next year. Oh, you'd take, it, it'll be four to one, and four Bevan to will one. be evens to even. the top try score for the club, yeah. You definitely say Liam will get more yardage because he's tough as teak. Yeah. Some of his defensive plays in the last two years have been best in comp. So, yeah, yeah, we're all chuffed for Bevan staying. Don't forget about little lad on the other wing, who probably yeah. is best pound fan player. Pound for pound, Liam Marshall, and what wages will be on, and what his attitude's like, is probably the best pound for pound fighter in Super League. Be- best yeah. pair of wingers, as a pair, you'd have, you wouldn't swap them, would you? No. Well, they're both off a different, different but I just look at Liam and think, you watch him and you go, Oh my God, he's just, he's got everything on him. Yeah, it's almost how it. And we're all looking for six foot three wingers with <laughs> electric pace. We're looking for these springers. He can jump 40 foot in air, one handed and all that. Brilliant. Well, here's another version of a winger. He's tough as tea, yardage, defensive, thought- application, and can finish. And when he's fully out of that 20 meter bust he's got, it's, it's electric, oh, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And he just, I don't know him at all, but. You watch him and he just, Looks I like just reckon he's spot on. Yeah, you just can imagine he's a quality lad, utmost professional, no arrogance, no mm. nonsense, just, and I said it when we did the England thing, I thought he was, I felt sorry for Ash Anley and I felt sorry for him and, and Paul McShay. Three players who I thought, I felt really sorry for not being involved. And I don't think there's a Wigan fan in the country that will say for the last eight weeks of the season that Marshall wasn't way more important than Bevan. Represent. I know Bevan got the plaudits and he scored loads of tries in, in that middle part, but yeah, it, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I don't think I can say much more than they're the only team for me who I think can can beat Saints to that top spot. There you go. Thank you, Jimbo. Nice, to, nice thing on Wigan. Hopefully, you enjoy it, Wigan fans and fans from Super League and all over the world. I still think there's still business to be had at Wigan. I think there'll be something else. There's a bit of free cap money with John Bateman. Yeah. And I think Matty will be, you know, and Chris Radlinski's will be doing their job and 
you know, using it wisely. I can't see Wigan at their side of club putting John's, whatever it is, let's say John's 200,000 away and going, you know what, we'll save that. I think they're probably going to go, listen, yeah. let's not rush in. Yeah, 100%. And let's have a look, but we've got that in hand. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing to have have, have in hand uh, if it comes to it, is it? A couple of hundred thousand on the left hip just in case, uh, you know, somebody... Do you know what's become more prevalent? You look at Toby and Jake. It has become more prevalent for players who are happy where they're willing to swap. And, and I said, how long have I said this yeah, about yeah. player trading? Yeah. I said, why don't clubs, when you've got a player who's not in form for you, but he's on big money, and it could suit somebody else's system, I said this would happen. I said in years to come, that might be more than transfers and waiting out a contract. No. Okay, we've got a centre. Toby King, he's not, we're not happy what Toby's doing. Toby's not happy with what you're asking him to do. Brilliant, get him to his field. It, it, it could have come off. It play, you know, he played in the playoff. It could have gone better. Mm. He's now got his move to to Wigan, where he's on. Jake Ward was gone in. I'm not happy. Bump, bump, bump. You know what I mean? Mm. We did the same. We you look at you look at the the, the best one, which were Cruz, as good as any. Were Cruz and Owen Trout? That were a swap deal at the time. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, God, who's Leeds fans didn't know much about Cruz. We're thinking, uh, they definitely know nothing about Trouty. Trouty's played 20-odd 20, 20 games a season for yeah. three years. One of the best young talents in game. And Cruz has really said every bit of justice yeah. at Leeds from coming as a 60, probably 60, 70 grand player. P- perfect example of that, isn't perfect, it? Perfect. I mean, it? I'm sure Leeds fans think they've done better. And I'm sure as field fans think that they've done better. I think, I think the other one, who did Lewis Johnson swap with it? Uh, I did the deal. What, from Castor Warrington? No, he went from Warrington to KR. And uh, somebody went the other way. Um, Greg Minikin. No, before Greg won it. Oh, Craig. One of ours. Or? I don't know. I did the deal. Anyway, that yeah, yeah, uh, it worked. Nice. It worked impeccably. Rob Malone. Malone. Yeah. Rob Malone. It worked impeccably mm. for both. Rob got to play two and a half years, and I think if Warrington, let's say, wow, what a good value for money player. Lewis probably needs to kick on. We need, we need Lewis to kick on. Okay, I got them injuries last year. Yeah. But when he first went, it would. So I think we might see more of that. Maybe yeah, yeah. that's what they'll do. But. And, and, and there's, you know, to, to reiterate it, there's a few teams in Super League that I think look desperately short of halves, and, and especially that they've got older halves, you know, more likely to get injured. Do you know what? We watched Morgan Smith on Boxing Day at Leeds, and Morgan's gone into three. He's gone as a two at Ucker, or three at Ucker, two at Ucker, he's gone a three at half. I know every Wakey fan after that game were like, yes. Because now you're worried about Gasky and you're worried about uh, Lino. You're saying, if they don't do it, we're a Wakey. They've got the answer. Yeah. Luckily for them now, you go, you're all right. You're all right. That's what you'd like to see at a few of the others. Yeah. You want to see, that's all right. Just... And, and, and do you think, right, so I'm, I'm looking, obviously we, not get, we know Gailey's gone to Keefley. He was probably the halfback. Oh, that, yeah, without that, doubt. That, you felt someone was going to take because we felt they were short. It, it, outside of Super League, and this is including Super League teams that have got young ones coming through, who I don't think are ready. Jackson Field, brilliant future head. I don't think he's quite ready. Listen, Gailey, they, 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 it wouldn't surprise me and it wouldn't surprise anybody, would it? If after Gailey has five minute matches at Keighley, yeah, and then somebody comes to Keighley and says, right, we'll offer you this. We need him to lend uh, it And here. that's possible. 100%. Yeah. So, so I'm thinking there's five champions... Anthony Fackery at Sheffield, I'm fit off the top of my head. There's, there's halfbacks in the championship who could do a job and step in, certainly to a top team. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, it, it'll be interesting to see if they come if they come looking for those, yeah. if they do drop drop injuries. Like it. Right, brilliant. Thank you. That's Wigan, ins and outs. Hope you're all enjoy it. Good luck, good luck to the Wigan fans this year. We'll try and get over a few times and have a bit of fun, but hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you. Yeah, good luck, Wigan.